so much for tuning into this video. I am Jay Theo, and today we're gonna be discussing the aspect of embracing sexual liberation and freedom in the black gay community, also discussing kink shaming and the key events that happen, such as Folsom Street Festival, circuit parties, and a lot of other sexual expression events that tend to be shamed when it comes to the black gay community. Now, I definitely there are definitely black people that are involved in these events and take pride in going to these events, but really what sparked the idea for this video has been a lot of the discourse online that has been really shaming and very judgmental when it comes to these events, especially if black people, black gay people are taking part in them. So last week, Folsom happened, Street Fair happened in San Francisco, which if you don't know where Folsom is, it is a street festival in San Francisco that was created in the 1980s to be able to showcase sexual expression, sexual freedom within the gay community. It was birthed out of the leather and BDSM community, which is a subculture within the gay community. And the whole goal of the event back then was to really embrace inclusivity and really minimize the stigma, especially during the AIDS epidemic. So, and it, and it was also rooted to raise money and raise awareness for the AIDS epidemic. So obviously back then, I'm not, you know, there definitely was racism, there definitely was um, segregation in, in Folsom, but the goal of the event was always to breed inclusive inclusivity. And it was always to minimize stigmas within the gay community. And now these days, the black community, the brown community are very heavily involved in Folsom. And there definitely is a community in our community that takes pride in these events such as Folsom. And there's just so much shade and so much, so much shade and so much shame and so much judgment that gets put on people that go to these events. And especially from the black community. It was so many tweets of people being like, how dare you go to these events? It's just, um, oh my God, um, the things that people do at these events. And I get it, some people's kinks, some people's fetishes, some people's things that they like, um, may not be your thing, but just because something is not your thing does not mean that you get to now put like push sexual oppression onto people. At the end of the day, the core of what kink and fetish culture is, is all about consent. It's all about being honest about the things you want to be a part of the things you don't. So that is a goal and a mission of the idea of these events is all about consent and embracing what's freedom and what you want to do. So I think that a lot of that gets missed and a lot of that gets, gets pushed under the rug when we have people in our community, the black gay community, pushing so much judgment and shade and shame to these events. Um, and I'm not saying, like I said, these events were always super inclusive from a racial standpoint, but now in 2023, they, they, they do embrace the black community and the brown community in ways they didn't before. And I think that people see images online and they see videos online and they don't actually attend these events and don't see that they can actually be something that really opens the door for people to really build community, for people to come together and pe for people to not shame themselves for the things that they want to take part in. Because y'all imagine a world where black gay men could express themselves authentically and honestly without fear of judgment or discrimination. Imagine that world. And when we are sitting up here throwing shade, throwing judgment at people's ex expression when it comes to their sexual journeys, their sexual adventures, that doesn't make us any better than a bigot that, that's, that's discriminated against us. So I definitely think that we as a black gay community need to think about how can we be more open-minded? How can we be more expansive with what sex can be and what kinks can be and what fetishes can be and what um, even communities we can look for to build within the community and some of those can be from sexual expression from sexual freedom and I really really hope one day we can get closer to that judgment free level we're never going to be perfect we're never going to hit their 100% and white gay the white gay community has not gotten their 100% but I definitely think that they create more spaces where sexual freedom and sexual expression and sexual liberation can thrive. So first off let's discuss sexual liberation and sexual freedom so we can get an idea where I feel that we need to get to when it comes to sexual expression. So I'm going to read the definitions to you guys. So, I, so sexual freedom is a human right. It means having the freedom to define, explore, and experience your own sexuality as you want without fear of repression or violence. So sexual liberation. The state of being free from sexual mores or inhibitions that are considered restrictive. 
The reason why sexual liberation and sexual freedom is so important, especially in queer communities, is because y'all, the queer community was seen as something that should be sexually oppressed and was seen as something that, that, that was abnormal and that honestly, in some places, still seen as illegal. And you know, there were many other things. Having multiple partners was seen as something that was sexually abnormal and something that should be sexually oppressed. You know, you know, trans people, all these things were seen as something that's sexual and that's something that should be suppressed. And it was deemed as even insane, it was deemed as illegal, and it was just deemed as an abnormal. It didn't allow for people to be thrown in jail, murdered, stoned, um, all of the above. And, and these things still are happening today due to sexual oppression and due to what someone deems is okay or right for someone's sexuality. And I think we need to always keep that in mind when we are passing judgment, we are passing our views and our oppression um, within our gay community when it comes to someone's sexual expression and when it comes to someone's sexual freedom. You know what I think is so ironic about the fact that a lot of black and brown people tend to pass judgment when it comes to sexual expression and sexual freedom, especially in the queer world, is that black and brown queer people led the charge back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s to create safe spaces and to allow for freedom of, of expression, self-expression, and sexual um, expression. We created the ballroom scene. We created the underground club scene. We created these spaces because we weren't allowed otherwise. And we, we created these spaces to allow for no fear for sexual identity and sexual expression. Trans people could be themselves. Gay queer men could be themselves. Drag, people who love drag could be themselves in these scenes. And we didn't pass any judgment. We allowed for it. And we allowed for it to thrive. And unfortunately, it seems like we're going backwards for whatever reason to now shame and not praise these type of spaces that um, allow um, sexual expression and sexual identity to flourish within the gay community. I feel like when it comes to the modern day gay black man, his idea of sexual liberation tends to be just being a hoe or taking part in group sex events all the time and having no regard for your own sexual health. But that's just not the case. It's allowing yourself to break free of these mental prisons that society, the black community, the black church, and heteronormativity has put on us that is preventing us to be being free in the ways that we want to pursue love, sex, sexual identity, our sexual expression, all of the above. And when we release ourselves from these mental prisons that we are locked in, it allows for us to create more safe spaces for our community as a whole. Um, if you are someone that likes to take part in sexual events and sexual adventures, to have a community, to have someone you can lean on that looks like you, to talk about how to how to have the safest practices, how to how to make sure you are really evaluating your risk, how what treatments or what medicines or what what medical advances have happened to be better prepared for these sexual adventures or, or, or these likes of sexual expressions, or but it's always better in numbers to if you are somebody that feels that you it's unsafe for you to really express your sexual identity and sexual expression when you when you meet other people that feel the same way there's power in numbers there's power in community and I think that we really set ourselves back as black gay men, as black queer people, when we don't want to create these safe spaces for ourselves and when we want to minimize these spaces for ourselves because it's just, oh my God, I'm clutching my pearls. How dare you? How? No, no. We need to create these safe spaces for ourselves because in turn, we always complain about how things are not inclusive. Oh, oh, well, we don't go to those parties because they're for the white gays or they're not for us or whatever. But we, if we become more open-minded or inclusive ourselves, we can continue to create more safe spaces for ourselves, more environment for sexual expression and sexual identity that will benefit us and that will create community of safety and protection for us. And this is something I've truly learned for myself. Now that I have really been able to open my mind on the different aspects of what gay culture is and what gay culture can be when it comes to sexual expression, when it comes to some of the underground party scenes, when it comes to circuit parties, when it comes to even just naked pool parties, y'all. There are naked pool parties that you can go to and that you can vibe with and meet people. There's nudist events, things like that, where you meet other gay men socially. Y'all, I've met some of the my, my best friends now in LA at these kind of events, at circuit parties, at nudist events, at at um, the underground club scene. Y'all, I've met 
so many cool people and I think these relationships for me are just so special because we're meeting each other by being our true authentic selves. We're not shaming ourselves for things we like and at the end of the day, we are human. Sex is a huge part of our lives. We are gay men. Wanting men, being around men, being in community with men is a huge part of us. Being able to see ourselves flourish in ways that we never even dreamed of is beneficial to our minds y'all and to our mental health and there's ways to build community from these events that may stem off of sexual identity sexual expression and sexual aspiration that lead to true community me and my friends yes we may have met in some of these events but me and my friends are going to six flags in a couple week, couple weeks to do fright fest all together as a group to do that we get brunch all the time we do we go on trips together for each other's birthdays we um have game nights we when, when one of us is going through a breakup or a problem we all band together and we get a bottle of wine we watch tv we vibe together and i think that there's so much connection that can be built off of these events that may be deemed more sexual but honestly sex and connection as gay men is a way that we come together and it's a way that we've always come together um especially when it comes to not just sexual exploration but sexual identity and, and how you identify as a person within our gay community and I think the more we stop passing judgment on kinks and fetishes and events that people like to go to within the gay community, we can really start having true dialogue and conversations about the dynamics of how sex factor into our relationships, how they factor into consent, how they factor into us being safe and really taking care of ourselves through with our sexual health and our, as we're on our sexual journeys and our romantic journeys. And also go at a certain point, Y'all, we've gone through a pandemic. We've gone through so much the last couple years, y'all. At a certain point, we have to stop giving so many fucks about everything, y'all. And we have to live our lives. And one thing I will say, y'all, when I go to circuit parties that are predominantly, they still are predominantly, unfortunately, white. When I go to leather events, when I go to even things like Deviant, when it hits right, because sometimes Deviant, which I'll talk more about later in the episode, in this video, but when these events, that are deemed circuit events or sexual events, pop y'all, and you're there and you're vibing to the music and you are in a jock strap and you guys are and you're in a harness and you're just vibing y'all. It's just such a level of freedom that is so hard to explain even in this video. To be around other gay men, being free, dancing, um, wearing glitter and face paint and you know, really being okay with your body. Um, Cause you know, that's another thing. It's so hard to be okay with your body when you're in these spaces and so many people are okay with all the different type, different body types. It just, it just allows you to just feel this sense of freedom and it just even adds more to that sense of I don't give a fuck. And I just really want more of that for members of our black gay community. I want more of that for us. So since this video stemmed from kink shaming, I really want to discuss what is kink shaming and my thoughts on how we can move past kink shaming as a black gay community and how we can all do better when it comes to us shaming what other people like to do sexually or, or with their sexual identity and sexual expression. So first off, you guys, I'm gonna define what a kink is. I'm gonna define what a fetish is, and then I'm gonna define. Then I'm gonna explain why kink shame is a, is an issue and break that down a little bit as well. A kink refers to unconventional or non-traditional sexual interests, practices, or activities that diverge from what is considered the mainstream or culturally normative in the realm of sexuality. Kinks can encompass a wide range of preferences and activities such as BDSM, bondage, discipline, dominance, play, etc., 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 etc. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, kink is often characterized by consensual, consensual, consensual exploration of unique sexual desires and may involve the use of specific props, scenarios, power dynamics. That's kink. Fetish, which can get a little murky, especially with us being black and gay, but I do want to read this one off um, and then I will discuss more kink shaming and all of that. So a fetish is a specific and intense sexual interest or fixation on a particular object, body part, or activity that is not typically associated with sexual arousal. People with fetishes often derive sexual pleasures or, or arousal from the presence, thought, or interaction with these chosen fetishes. Common, common examples of fetishes include foot fetishes, um, leather fetishes, latex fetishes, materials, things like that. And then we also know that we can also, there's a lot of fetishes with, within race. And you saw that there, it talked about objects and materials and body parts. So to be, to fetishize somebody for their race, to fetishize somebody for the way they look, 
things like that. That's where we get murky, and that's where we start. And at the end of the day, fetishes, fetishizing should never come with the idea of dehumanizing people. So my, the way I look at it is if you're fetishizing someone and dehumanizing them and not seeing them as a human, then that's where it becomes a big issue. And also, if you do feel like you have racial fetishes, are you asking yourselves why? Are you trying to unlearn those fetishes? And are you always, even if you do have that fetish, and that is what, what makes you happy or what you want to pursue, are you humanizing and treating those people as humans and, and, um, when you are pursuing that fetish? So that's my, th my thoughts kind of on fetish overall. And now I want to dive into kink shaming, um, y'all. And I think... And then they always making sure you're asking your your mind the questions, why do I why am I thinking this? Why am I liking this? Whatever. But always making sure at the end of the day you're humanizing, like I said. But let's get on let's get on to kink shaming and why kink shaming is an issue and why we need to do better as a black gay community. Okay, so first off, the first reason why kink shaming is wrong is because it, it offers, it passes judgment and it stigmatizes people's interests if they have a kink or a fetish that may not be something typically seen as mainstream or normal. But it's okay to have kinks and fetishes that that do not dehuman, dehumanize people and that are consensual. It's okay to have these kinks and fetishes. When we stigmatize things and we cause people and we pass judgment, now we're, 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 we're making somebody feel ashamed and feel bad for liking these things or having interest in these things. And doesn't this sound familiar? Doesn't stigma, when you stigmatize a group of people or you stigmatize a way of life, that always leads to a level of oppression. You know? The next reason why kink shaming is bad is it reinforces norms. It reinforces this idea that there's only one way to do be. There's only one way to have sex. There's only one type of person you should have sex to it. There's only one way to really embrace sexuality. When And basically saying that all other ways are bad. And there are 8 billion pe people on this planet there is no one way to express your sexual identity. There is no way to explore your sexual freedom. There is no one way. There is no mainstream way. We need to stop reinforcing that everything should be a certain way. And we've learned that when people can express themselves and be authentic to themselves, it allows for them to show up as a full human being. And it minimizes depression. It minimizes self-hate. It minimizes ways where people start to self-deprecate themselves when, when we allow them to be their true, real, authentic self. And the final reason why kink shaming is bad, like I just said, it has a harmful impact to humans. It causes us to have issues with our mental health, depression. We feel oppressed. We feel like we can't be our true selves. Then that's going to lead to toxicities within our mental health. It also discourages sexual confidence. People feel like they can't really lean into their kinks or fetishes or just exploring their sexuality at all. Then it, it, it lowers their sexual confidence and it discourages them from being confident when they're having sex. And then it allows this self-deprecating, defeating, basically energy for anyone trying to explore their sexuality and their sexual identity and their sexual expression. Because we should allow people to have honest and open discussions about their sexual desires and their sexual needs at once, especially in relationships, especially when, especially in relationships, especially when we are, we are evolving consenting adults. People should be able, to be able to have real honest conversations. And that will come to haunt your romantic relationships if you are not allowing yourself to have real honest discussions when it comes to your sexual behavior and your sexual desires and at the end of the day we all should be able to be free as human beings when it comes to our sexual identity and sexual expression no matter if we are evolved romantically or not as long as we're always operating on the level of a consent to quote lifecoachingtherapy.com kink shaming is a much bigger problem than just making someone feel ashamed for their sexual choices it sends the message that not everyone can live an authentic life not everyone can live an authentic life that's not okay. So when it comes to when it comes to being a black gay man, us shutting down keep sh shaming just further allows for black gay men to have autonomy and full freedom when it comes to who they are as a person. And I think that's the core of all of this is that when we allow black gay men to be who they are with their sexual identity, their sexual expression, when it comes to all of this, it shows them that they can have autonomy over who they are. And so much of our identity as, as, as black gay men is wrapped into our sexual identity and how we represent sexually. And so much about being a man is how we, 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 are, we, we are perceived sexually. So to be able to take ownership and autonomy on how you are received and what you 
how you want to take part in your sexual journey and your sexual adventure, your sexual expression. That gives so much freedom to black gay men. And I think it also triggers into other aspects of our identity. We further allow ourselves to have full autonomy, who we are. So much of our sexual expression is tied to femininity, masculinity, all those things. And I feel like if you are allowing yourself to be more free sexually, then you're going to allow yourself to be more free when it comes to masculinity and femininity, how you operate, the way you look, what do you wear, how you speak, how you sound, what do you do? I think that's just, it's just starts the gear, starts the trigger for you really to start allowing the door to open and for you to allow yourself to express yourselves in all aspects of life, not just sex, in the ways you want and allows you to have full autonomy. And we as black gay men, if we let other black gay men, we allow that, then we are creating community for each other. We are fostering a sense of, I got you there, brother, I got you. Be yourself, be yourself. And I feel like we, I feel like we need more of that within our community and not more of shaming and oppressing because we're just doing what the straight community does to us. We're just doing what bigots do to us. We're doing the same exact thing when we don't allow that. Also, when it comes to black gay men, when you are understanding and not saying you have to lean into somebody else's kink, when you are understanding that people can have certain kinks and certain fetishes and certain desires, when you understand that they can have that, you in turn are becoming a more accepting person. You are becoming a more understanding person. You are becoming a more global thinking person when it comes to understanding other humans. And when you allow yourself to be more accepting and understanding, then you can then look at yourself with more acceptance and understanding. It is twofold. The more I started going to circuit parties and underground events and nudist events and things like that, it started really setting the door for me to be like, wow, I really can do this. Like, I can look at myself and be like, wow, when I meet other people doing it and they're enjoying it and they're having fun and they're able to talk about it so freely, I can look myself in the mirror and be like, Jay, you can do this too. And it's okay. And there is no shame. You know, because even as I've gotten older, as I've gotten older, even when I just was like, you know, I'm just gonna expand I just feel like as a gay person, the more you start unpacking and experiencing more of the things in gay world when it comes to gay sex and when it comes to gay culture, you really start so you, you really have to fight the urges to shame yourself. You really have to fight the urges to hate yourself for the things that you like, for the people that you like, for the, the sexual practices that you like. And, and these are still normal things in gay world. But even as you're starting to learn those things as a young adult, you really have to fight the urge to shame yourself because we are so programmed as black gay men to be so anti everything that's queer and everything that's gay. And the more you start opening your eyes, the more you can really start accepting yourself and the more that I feel like I really started accepting myself the more that I start opening the door when it came to my sexual identity, my sexual expression, even how I present it from a gender expression level, which I'm actually gonna make a video about gender expression, how that shifted for me. But even that, I feel like it, it's just it's just giving me so much autonomy and so much freedom, y'all. It really has. So I wanna list off four ways I think that we can combat kink shaving within the black community. So here we go. First off, educate yourself. Learn about different kinks, different fetishes. Learn about what are what is the world of king of fetishes that are that are really popular? And I feel like the more you learn, the less hangups you'll have about these kinks of fetishes, and the more you'll be able to embrace someone that has them. And understanding that just because someone has a kink, it's not your kink. Just because someone has a fetish, it's not your fetish. But being, but understanding that people have these fetishes, that there's so many unique desires out there, and being able to embrace them. Um, at the end of the day, I think that's the biggest way to to start the ball to really minimize your level of kink shaming. Challenge stereotypes. So next up, y'all, challenge stereotypes. We as black gay men have to challenge the stereotypes we have for ourselves. Oh, black gay men, we don't wear harnesses. We don't wear leather. We don't we don't wear jock straps. We don't go to nudist events. We don't we don't take part in circuit parties. Black gay people do all things. We are not a monolith. We do all things. And when the more of us show up to these things and are open-minded to these things, the more embraced and the more broad we can start looking at the, our black gay community. So challenge those stereotypes, guys. Because at the end of the day, we need to understand that everybody's different. Everybody has different sexual desires. Everybody has different way they were raised and different ways that they view the world. And we have to be more open to embracing that at the end of the day. So the next one, and this is a big one, promote consent and communication. At the end of the day, the core of kinks and fetishes is consent, 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 and communication. And at the end of the day, if there's always consent, 
if there's always an understanding that if I'm taking part in this desire, if I'm taking part in this kink and fetish, I want to, I'm, I'm here, where I'm present, and also, if there's things I don't know about it, communicating, letting that person know, if you need a safe word, or if you need to, or I need to slowly get into this, or I, I, I really wanna learn, but I'm not there yet, communicate, guys. You can communicate. And this is not even for the most outlandish kinks and fetishes. Um, this is also for if you the first time you want to go to a nudist event, the first time you want to go to a circuit party. Explain, okay, you know, I have some hang-ups about circuit parties, I have some hang-ups about things that go on these underground party scenes, I have some hang-ups hang about not being fully clothed at one of these events. How can how can I you know, get more comfortable. What are your tips or what are your tricks or how how did you power through it? Y'all communicate with people. That's 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 a big thing, you know? Cause I feel like you never know what you're gonna enjoy, y'all. The first time I went to a pool party situation that was nudist and there's, you know, it was one of the dopest experiences of my life, honestly. Um, and it was a fully gay event. It was just one of the dopest events ever. So you never know, and I didn't think I would even like something like that. And you never know what you'll like until you get to experience it. But always remember, ask those questions about consent and always make sure that you are communicating. And the last thing we can do is to really combat kink shaming is to advocate for inclusivity. We as black gay people to really advocate for inclusion within our communities, within the gay community as a whole, within the black gay community, and always pushing that, you know, we, we, we do need to make sure that we have safe spaces and community spaces for us as black gay men. And we shouldn't always have to go to spaces that we are not always welcome to experience new things. We can create those new experiences for ourselves. We can create those spaces for ourselves. And Deviant is an amazing example about that. If you guys don't know what Deviant is, I will drop a link to their Instagram in the description. But Deviant is a, um, circuit party leather event that happens every month in Atlanta, LA, DC, um, now happening in Houston, um, emerging all New York, emerging um, all over the country. And it's still not where other circuit parties and other leather, leather events are from other races and other communities, but we are getting there and it's a start. And I think it's a great way if you have interest in circuit parties, leather culture, sexual expression in new ways, Deviant is a good first start and first step to get there. It still is a balance of people, you know, in the gear, in the jog straps, in the harnesses, and a balance of people just wearing regular clothes. Um, and there's other stuff that happens at these parties. <laughs> but for the most part, it still is a very, I would say very entry level level version of circuit parties, leather parties that you can set, dip your toe in as a black person as, and as someone who doesn't have the perfect body type that I think could be a great way for a lot of you guys to kind of get exposure to it. So I will drop the information about Deviant, but us, but that's an example of us creating a space for ourselves as black queer people. And the more we embrace these, these different elements of sexual expression, the more we can create these events for ourselves and even go, getting a group and going to Folsom. That's something I want to do next year. I want to get my group of gay guy friends and we're going to go to Folsom. That's a goal and to turn up and to, to, to be lit. But I heard friends that went fishing. They said it was so many black gays there. It was so many brown gays there. So Folsom really is a place that diversity is thriving now every, every year and a lot more people that look like us are embracing their sexual expression and really leaning into their sexual desires and sexual adventures. And like I said, a lot of these events stem from um, education and, and eliminating um, um, stigmas. And even I believe Folsom started, and I think it still is, as a big fund for like um, 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 AIDS awareness, AIDS research, all those things. A lot of these events use them to educate people on HIV AIDS, on um, STDs, on, on and just building community as a whole. But it's also these are and to eliminate stigma when it comes to leather culture. Um, um, Deviant's really big on eliminating stigma when it comes to um, bodies and all of the above. So y'all, with all that said, I know it was a mouthful that I was discussing when it came to embracing our sexual liberation as black people. Y'all, it's super important as black gay men for us to be open to, to embracing and not to kink shame, not to pass judgment when it comes to, to our sexual identity, our sexual aspiration, our sexual freedom. And I challenge you to take these steps and to think about the things we said in this video to really minimize shaming in, within our community and to be more open to taking a leap and testing out and exploring your sexual identity and your own sexual expression. So as always guys, do your best to stay safe, stay positive, and I will see you guys on the next video.